Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is Saturday, December the 19th. And I have been praying and asking the Lord, what would you like for me to read this morning, Lord? Because I kind of wanted to know my reading to be something like he wanted to show me something maybe, you know? Jasper, do you really have to bark when I get started? Happy breakfast. I think I signed up for breakfast. Okay. Anyway, so I heard in my mind just Ecclesiastes. Just real quick. Like, Ecclesiastes? Really? So I don't like that book. <laughs> Seriously, he's so depressed to me. Okay, so I said, okay, and I just started reading it. Okay, and here's what I got out of it right away in chapter 1. I highlighted it in my Bible, but I've got it pulled up here. Okay, so let's go to Ecclesiastes. Uh, wait, I wanted to do that second. While I was reading Ecclesiastes, it came into my mind. The Lord brought it to my remembrance. This is sort of a two-parter, okay? These two don't really have anything to do with each other. Or maybe they do. <laughs> but I, um, it's like I was working on this Ecclesiastes and the meanings and stuff. And all of a sudden it came to my remembrance. I had sent several of you an email. I don't have everybody's email address because not everybody has ever emailed me. But those who have, I had your address. So you got... A link to a video that was on Brighteon okay and only one person wrote back and said I'm not going to share it because there's some things we don't agree on and um, it, it'll bring confusion and and I said I can't remember what I replied but they actually replied back and said um, we don't agree that the abomination of desolation is the, uh, the V, okay, that will, you know, the, the V jab. Okay, so I was like, okay, well, I'm so relieved to know, she went on to say, they know what it is, they're not going to partake in it, and... They don't uh, go to doctors. They go to King Dr. Jesus and things like that. And I was like so thrilled. Okay, so anyway. So that came to my remembrance about the abomination of desolation. And why um, I wanted to look it up and see what are the alternative meanings for it. Okay. So I typed in abomination of desolation and came up with, I think I lost my place. It's in Mark. Okay, it's talking about things that will happen. And, okay, now where did it go? Oh, okay, sorry. It's 13, 14. Mark 13, verse 14. But when ye shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing where it ought not, let him that readeth understand. Then let them that be in Judea Flee to the mountains. Okay. If you take that literally. You think. That means. They're going to build a third temple. And do something in the temple. Maybe the Antichrist is going to go in there. And set himself up. But if you'll recall. In Daniel. The abomination of desolation. When they. Uh, destroyed the temple I believe it was that time they put a pig they slaughtered a pig on the altar 
Okay. Which to the Jews, to the Hebrews, they weren't Jews yet. They, that's a modern term for short for Judeans. And we know that southern half of Israel is Judea. The northern half is called Israel. All right. So anyway, I decided to look up abomination of desolation. And you will be surprised. Okay, where is it? Okay. The abomination of desolation. When ye shall see the abomination of desolation. Okay. Oh, I wanted to look up the word standing. Spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not. Because that's where you get the, in your mind's eye, uh, okay, that's a person standing in the temple, right? Or an idol. All right, well, listen to the meanings. It's G2476. He's stemmy. All right, he's stemmy. It's the word. The Greek word. Now it has many meanings. It does mean stand, set, establish, stand still, stand by, miscellaneous, 17 times it's used in a miscellaneous way, or variations of stand. All right, to cause or make to stand. To place, put, set. Now think about what it means for today's purposes. The capital A in the outline says to bid to stand by and in parentheses set up. In the presence of others, this is the small i under the capital A, in the presence of others, in the midst, before judges, before members of the Sanhedrin, and the small, or the two, you'd call it two in Roman numerals, I, I, to place. You're placing the abomination of desolation where it ought not to be. It doesn't have to be a person or an idol standing in a temple. See, the One World Trade Center is really the third temple. Did you all know that? I'll have to look that up, see if I can find it someone with authority stating that. But anyway, um, it goes on to, to say other, to establish a thing, cause it to stand, to uphold or sustain the authority or force of anything, to set or place in a balance, and let's see the other one continue safe and sound stand unharmed to stand ready or prepared so you can see by the strong's concordance that it can pass it can mean to set in place to put it is being put there know ye not that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. God does not dwell in buildings made by human hands. Not anymore. Once Jesus came, died again, he set it up where our bodies are died again. He died and rose again. Then went back to heaven, sent the Holy Spirit to indwell our temples. And all those people in that upper room got Filled 
to overflowing with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. That's the manifestation of being filled. Many will not agree with me. They'll say, no, there's lots of gifts. Some people will get the gift of this and some will get the gift of that. Well, I agree. You'll, you can also go on to get other gifts. But every time in the Bible that someone got filled with the Holy Spirit, they began to speak in tongues. So you take that up with the Lord if you have not. Now, to go back to Ecclesiastes, which is what I started off reading. All right, I'm going to skip down to verse 9. Now listen to this. The thing that has been, I'm changing the thing to NASB. Okay, they call it the futility of all endeavor. All right, let me go back to verse 9. That which has been is that which will be. And that which has been done is that which will be done. So there is nothing new under the sun. Verse 10. Is there anything of which one might say, See, this is new? Already it has existed for ages which were before us. So, verse 11, 1, 1, 1, Ecclesiastes 1, 11. There is no remembrance of earlier things. In other words, it wasn't written down, put in the book. And also of the later things which will occur, there will be for them no remembrance among those who will come later still. What does that say to you right off the bat? What they're doing now, though it may be in a different way, has been done already. The changing of the DNA. Before it was done through physical uh, sons of God taking daughters of men, procreating and making babies who now had n n new DNA and were not wanted by God, which is why when the Israelites went into Canaan to overtake a city, God would tell them, destroy every man, woman, and child. And I used to wonder when I first started reading the Bible, and even up until the last 10 years, I was like, why would he have them destroy the children? Couldn't they take the children and raise them? And I kind of didn't like that. I didn't understand it. But they had Nephilim DNA in them. And God did not want them. It isn't about the physical mark. It is about the changing of the DNA. There is nothing new under the sun. And I imagine they've been doing it in Petri dishes or, you know, how they, you can artificially inseminate a woman. Okay. So it may not be getting done exactly the way they did it back then, but there is nothing new under the sun. They're going to set up the abomination of desolation like they did back in Ecclesiastes, but in a new way. It's a different way, but it's the same old thing. Causing God to not want you 
because your DNA is changed. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. I've been hearing from the Lord again, even though it's just little things. Like when I was off for a week, I had a really bad night. Really bad. A lot of convulsions. And I was praying, Lord, make this stop. Why am I doing this? What did I do today? To, you know what? I don't remember overdoing it. And all I heard was, today you rest. Like that. It was like a male voice in my head. Today you rest. So even though I was off of YouTube, I'd been off for four days or three days. I was still trying to send out emails, trying to type in the comments about they kick me off. If you want to know why, go watch this video. And I put the link and I tried to copy and paste it under as many comments as I could. And, you know, and then I was doing other things and watching other videos and just uh, working around here so before that I think I told you this before I got off when uh, t grafted in team Jesus we were on a Google meet we were all singing and praising the Lord you know with worship songs for about 30 minutes and then we all prayed in the spirit for about 10 minutes and Kathy said, is anybody getting anything from the Lord? And I said, I keep hearing, I am coming. I am coming. I am coming. And I, so I heard that and I was like, praise the Lord. I hadn't heard from the Lord in so long. And I've been praying and praying and praying. So he is a rewarder to those who will diligently seek him, okay? And if you don't already have the ability to pray in the Spirit, please don't reject it. Please seek after it. Please. It is so important in your walk with the Lord because the Holy Spirit can pray for things you know not of. That's how it's worded. Like for people and even for yourself. You don't, you may not realize you need a prayer request for yourself. And the Holy Spirit knows. And when you let yourself pray in the Spirit, He'll pray that prayer for you. So anyway, that's what I wanted to say to you is about the thing about Ecclesiastes Wait a minute, I think there was, um, oh, I had undermarked verse 17. Let me go down and see if it was something. Um, 1, 12, 13, 14, 15. And I set my mind to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. I realize that this also is striving after wind because in much wisdom there is much grief and increasing knowledge results in increasing pain. So all these geniuses that have worked out all this stuff have ended up being bought up by Satan and his minions. Being extremely intelligent, it ends up making you not believe in God because you overthink things. You're like, what if this? What if that? Well, why is it this way? Why is it that way? Because your brain is overthinking things. 
That's why I wanted to include that. So having much knowledge, increasing knowledge results in increasing pain. So if you keep overthinking things, it will possibly send you to hell because it, it, it takes away faith. It takes away a person's ability to believe in things they cannot see. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I'll see you soon, brothers and sisters in Christ. I plead the blood of Jesus over this video, over us and our devices and our internet connections. And with that, I'll say bye for now. I'll talk to you later.